Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is a review of the Vaxi Zigen NP01S, and this is my favorite Vaxi mouse. They did send it out to me as they have their prior mice, um, but this one, it is just hitting better than those last mice hit. Um, it is a smaller version of the NP01, and you can tell it is smaller by a pretty significant amount. Um, it's less tall, it's less wide, and it's just a mouse that really feels great in my hands when I'm clawing it um in the left side it isn't straight but you still have so much freedom with your thumb and the same thing on the right side because of the curve they've like kind of mastered shapes i don't mean that like how logitech mastered shapes by making a mouse that basically works for everybody um but if a vaxi mouse is made and it accommodates your grip it will just fit like a glove in your hand and i usually don't feel like passionate about shapes or anything um but this one is really a great one for my claw grip and even like ergo mice because you can tell um from here it doesn't look massively ergo but if you look at it from the back um you can see those curves and this is just a mouse um weighing 74 grams having an extremely premium build um just vaxi mice feel quality in hand um, so weighing 74 grams, it's not like ultra, ultra light, but around 70 is perfectly fine for me. You don't need anything lighter. Um, if you think you aim better with lighter mice, you know, those are available. Um, but I feel like I was still able to play perfectly fast with this mouse um, as a 3389 sensor. I believe that's what the Vaxi mice use. Absolutely no problems with it. Everything is on board. Um, and I didn't notice until recently how fucking massive this two ms debounce time is um, because i've started playing fortnite a lot more i'm not like insanely good at fortnite but i've just noticed that like i'm able to like double edit so quickly when i have the debounce time low and when i first had the np01 and i would set it to that debounce time whenever i slam the mouse the click would activate but it seems like they've fixed that if you do experience any issues you can just go to four it's not going to be a massive difference um, but you really can feel the difference from eight to two I've been talking about the debounce time, so now I should probably talk about the clicks. Um, they're still using the Huano 10Ms, and they have a different texture on the clicks. I've been using this mouse a bit more um, than I normally use Vaxi mice, I guess, um, because I had used it before my RJN mouse review. Nobody really cares. Um, I have a decent amount of time on this mouse. I've kind of gotten used to that texture. Um, I still don't really understand why it's there, but now it just feels normal. And the clicks are so light, so snappy. Um, I don't really care about the sound. Like, I'm talking right now, and I don't really know what they sound like, so let's do a sound test. I still have my headphones on, so I can't hear them, but they probably, I would say, like, oh, they sound awesome. Awesome click. The tensioning feels the exact same as it does on the Outset AX, and it just feels so satisfying, like, having a good click feel, knowing that the mouse is made by a company that isn't full of, like, incompetent idiots. Like, these people know how to make a high-quality mouse, and that's what you're getting. The cable itself remains unchanged from past mice. It's not flexible. Um, it is worse than, like, the old ExtraFi cables, I would say. They say they focus on durability, and I bet not many of these cables are breaking, so it's working out for them uh, but yeah I'm gonna be paracording this mouse only because I like it so much to the point I'm gonna use it after reviewing it um, but it's so much harder to recommend mice saying like you might not fuck with the cable um, even though in a bungee like you can still feel the weight of it occasionally but it doesn't ruin the experience and you'll still be able to play with it um, I guess it's just a preference thing um, next thing I want to talk about are these side buttons they're too small for my liking I was still able to use them fine um, they're positioned all right but they kind of remind me of like the Model O side buttons, but just with a better click feeling. But I wish they were a bit bigger, um, sort of like they were on the NPO1S. Or no, the normal NPO1. Holy shit. Uh, but now I just want to talk about the shape of this mouse. It doesn't... I So I said before that it is a more narrow and shorter version of the NPO1, but it really just does. It feels like a sort of lower profile Ergo S2. Um, you could say, with a completely different and better feeling right side. I really like the way that it flares out on the right side. So comfortable for my pinky. And if you want to know more about the shape or see comparisons, I would recommend just checking out their website. They write articles like comparing it to every mouse you could imagine. Um, but the right side of this mouse, they say it was designed for people who curl their fingers. And I could not agree with that more. Like it just feels 
great for that grip. So does the Super Light and a mouse like the Burst Pro. Anything that has like a tall right side um, that really gives you freedom, I guess. Um, but this is a smaller mouse and it just felt great. I was surprised that I was happy with the width of this mouse. I thought it was going to be a bit too narrow at first because I do have 11 centimeter wide hands. But in using the mouse, I just realized that the original NPO one was way too wide and fucking bulky for me. I wouldn't recommend this mouse for fingertip. Um, you can like sort of do it, I, but I wouldn't recommend it. And something about using mice that aren't ambi for fingertip just feels really weird to me. Um, I don't know if anybody else can relate to that, but I thought it was only big mice, but now it's just like anything that's ergo is like kind of off. Next thing I want to talk about is the scroll wheel. It is the most disgusting sounding mouse wheel there is. If you're really sensitive, you might need to get a separate mouse for browsing or something. Um, but most people will just be able to deal with it. But there's no denying that it does sound like gears grinding. Well, rhyme, like, and sub. Um, but yeah, it's extremely like well-defined steps. The most well-defined steps. This is the most tactile scroll wheel, I would say. Um, and just even like more amplified versions of the old Zowie wheels is a good way to put it. Uh, but it felt great for scroll wheel reset, and the click is a bit heavy, I would say. Um, next thing I want to talk about are these stock feet. They're 0.4 millimeters thick. They're more slow and controlled than a, like faster aftermarket options. And I've realized that these feet just make every mouse pad feel smooth. It doesn't matter if it's a he end, the most textured mouse pad, they will just slow it down and make it feel smooth just very big glides i'm pretty sure it's the same design as it is on the other vaxi mice um yeah so I, I don't know what that's about but that's just what the feet do at least in my experience once they break in they do have 0.6 millimeter options available like when you check out on their website for i think like three dollars or something so if you prefer that go for that if you want core pads they're already available um so really no issues there i would recommend this mouse i mean the cable is really the major thing holding it back because a lot of people if you're used to paracords or more flexible cables you're just going to be disappointed as i mentioned before like in a bungee you'll be able to play and some people are like oh you shouldn't complain at that point and i don't know what do you guys think about the cable on this mouse like i actually want to know honest opinions the way i see it is at this point it's just hard to recommend a wired mouse that doesn't feel wireless there's already so many great wireless options it's just like is this really worth 60 plus another like 20 or 25 um i don't know for me i would say it's hard to give it the seal of approval but this is just such a well-rounded high quality mouse the coating is the last thing to talk about and you can see like my hands really aren't that wet right now um they're actually not moist at all um and it's just picking up so many fucking fingerprints and yeah the coating is a fingerprint magnet it also has been a lot more hot and humid. It's like almost summer or whatever. Um, so that could be a factor as well. Um, but this is by no means a perfect coating. And if you do like sweat a lot, it'll probably be slippery. Um, it never slipped out of my hand, but that might just be because I have such a good grip on this mouse. Um, I don't really know if there's anything else more to say. 74 grams, it's not the lightest. Um, the weight balancing seems to be fine. I'm still gonna use the super light over it, even though I think the NPO 1S has like a better shape that's like sort of made for me in a sense. Um, because the super light is lighter, has better balancing, better stability it feels, um, and I just like the feeling of wireless more. Um, but this is a top tier wired mouse, and Vaxi really knows how to make high quality mice. I hope they expand into wireless. That'll be the easiest way to get them to fix their cables by just ditching the cable. Uh, but that's gonna be all. If you did not enjoy the NPO one because you thought it was like too big or bulky, give the NPO one S a try and I think you'll really like it. But like I mentioned before, this is my favorite Vaxi mouse they've made so far. And the click feeling is just so good if you need to spam click or really just click the mouse, which everybody does. It feels sick. Um, so yeah, that's going to be all. Make sure to leave a like and sub if you enjoyed. Peace.